Huh, this is Steve Melendra's uh, case. I've just, this is the same. Um, I was the uh, naturist museum illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, model maker, and so on, so on, so on. Um, uh, now I'm an educator. <clears throat> and I'm uh, retiring this year. <clears throat> and I'm going to be doing a watercolor study of Haystack Rock in Oregon. Now I'm going to probably do two different versions. One kind of, because Oregon usually has a lot of gray clouds. I'm going to do one like that. And then one with kind of like a an orangish, orangish um, sunset. Um, and I'm going to just kind of, because I don't like to make these things too long. Uh, I'm just going to get like pretty much laying things out and then adding a couple of photos uh, to the end of it, just so you can see the progression to a gets finished, because so, it's going to take me a little time. But uh, <laughs> I do like to interject my life with my artwork, because <clears throat> that's the way I used to teach. A lot of lectures, uh, a lot of life experiences, uh, trying to prepare my young students for life along with learning techniques. Um, so, you know, maybe they can learn from my experiences. Um, but anyway, so I wasn't going to do this little part. Um, but <laughs> it's just me. Um, okay, so I know this has nothing to do with art. Um, I was retiring um, this January uh, in the beginning. Anyway, I'm trying to get all that set up, and there's a lot of paperwork and you know, appointments and stuff. Um, so, <laughs> I thought I was going to be insured for the month of January, you know, because I, I was going to do the transition and all that stuff. Um, so, December 31st, I kind of ordered um, one medication, because I take several medications, uh, that I needed just because it was getting close to that time and they texted me back that there was some problem with my insurance and I'm thinking wow you know did they cancel it <laughs> in December before I retired uh, I thought it was really strange anyway I need this medication to breathe um, so I you know and I have to take these steroids every 12 hours just to stay normal can't skip anything so I have yeah anyway um so you know I've been paying I don't know something like 15 20 dollars for this injectable thing uh, so um I can't wait to have them figure out what's going on so I said okay well, well what's just the the normal buyout price of this thing I need I need. And they looked it up and they said $400. And I'm like, what? $400? Are you insane? And I, and I pretty much explained to him, I said, okay, now I understand why old people are eating foods that are not made for humans. I'll just leave it at that. And why Older people, maybe they don't have an insurance thing because they had worked for a company and their whole life and didn't have a pension or whatever. Um, and they're cutting their medication in half. Now I know why. This is only one medication. Sorry, going on. I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm going to be doing <laughs> the demonstration on how to do the watercolor for Haystack Rock in Oregon. I may kill this... Uh, um, video on this part, but I don't know. That wouldn't be like me either. So, anyway. Okay, so this is Haystack Rock. <clears throat> now I'm just going to do some random kind of background colors. 
Now this is a different way of painting that I'm, I really don't do. Okay, so I'm just gonna go into the rock because that's not gonna make any difference. And this is gonna be what they call uh, wet on wet. So I'm gonna come in here And I'm just dipping in would be an ultramarine blue and the paint's gray. Now I'm going to do another one like something similar to this. But with kind of a sunset type now I'm going to come in with a smaller brush. And if you look at my these brushes I have I'm working with right now, I work with a lot of different brushes, but you can see I'm just kind of blending in, blending in, it's leaving some of these things because they do kind of add interesting shapes. And then I'm going to come in here and pull the color out. Kind of make cloud formations. <clears throat> Again, like I said before, I kind of make it look easy because I've been doing this for <laughs> since I was five and I'm an old man now, so. And, uh, but it's, it's, just the way I paint. Um, and I can come back in here and add a little bit more of the paint's gray. I know in the video, it's probably not showing up very dark, but I can change things around. Now this is called wet on wet. So, and those are some of the little happy mistakes. And I can come, now this is kind of the way a lot of people do watercolors and this is fine. This is really kind of fun. And once you do a few of these, they get easier and easier. <clears throat> um, but the way I would paint, and I don't know if I'm going to show this. This video is going to be a little bit longer because um, it just needs to be. Um, but I'm not going to make it a full scale, long, long video. So I'm going to get to a point where I would say, okay, my middle school students would be at this point and then I would show a couple of still images of the progression of things but I'm still going to show the techniques um, how to get here now um, I know this is going to sound weird but I'm going to use that same color this is going to be water down here so um, I'm just going to put that watercolor down here maybe some here, kind of continuation of that here. Um, maybe make it a little bit more over here. Now I'm going to make some corrections on this as time goes on. But I'm just trying to duplicate the reflections in what would be and I'll see if I can do the water ocean techniques that is very tedious because it's a lot of teeny strokes and i'll just give a small example of how that technique works now this is going to be kind of a reflection of the rock coming down here and some of it in here but um what's going to happen is this is going to be sand and that takes a little time because i need to block this off and I use a toothbrush and add uh, different colors of sand, but I have to block off the water so that it doesn't get on there, so it'll make more sense later. And I'm going to use the same rock techniques that I did um, on that other coast picture, so you can see 
kind of the technique. Now I'm going to kind of stylize this haystack rock um, because depending on what time of year you go, they it looks different. Sometimes it's all in fog. Sometimes you can see the green uh, on the rock. Sometimes you just see a shadow of it. Um, so this thing takes on all kinds of different forms. And like I said, I'm going to do one like this, and then I'm going to do another one on the other side, uh, kind of like a sunset. So it's going to be something similar to this, but it's just going to be a little bit more orangey and red in here. This is more kind of a cloudy day. And like I said, I'm going to go back into these little cloud areas to form little clouds. It's very soft. And I can come back in here and, and even pull out more. This is just one technique I show my students. Um, they may not get the, the idea of this. So what I actually do is just get a tissue paper. I have one here. Oops, I don't seem to have a tissue paper here. Hang on just a sec. Nope, I don't. Give me a sec here. <laughs> okay, so, um, tissue paper. I'm just going to come in here and just press down and you can see it'll make some interesting little cloud formations. Again, you can see cut, and I'm just going to blow it in a little bit. So I'm going to move this around just a little bit so you can see kind of some of the accidents that turn into, and that will give me kind of an idea of what I need to detail out. Oh, and um, these <laughs> these brushes. Now, if you ever buy these brushes or brushes like this, very similar, um, I got a set of these, or different kinds, and they're awesome. Um, be sure you get some, like, sewing thread. I don't know if you can see that. But you just wrap it right around, around the stem, real tight, and you make some knots. That will prevent these hairs from coming off, which does happen, but it just keeps the brush intact much longer. Um, and just a little secret there. Um, I could always switch over to different brushes, which I do, all constant. Now, I know this is not, I'm just doing this for And you can see I'm just kind of blending things in. Now you got some little happy accidents. Looks like clouds breaking through in the sky. Um, now I'm going to start working on the rock. Now the way I work is I go light. <laughs> My kids must have seen a <laughs> balloon. They go kind of crazy when it's balloon time. I don't know why there'd be balloons out right now, but it's possible. Anyway, so I'm going to go a little bit using the, the lightest ochre. So, now, like I said, this is going to take a life on its own. More paint. I like to go light, but... Now I'm just doing a, a bigger brush here. I'm going to change things around. And I could pull the color out. Now it's going to do a transition. So 
So there'll be some darks and lights. And just like I did with the the other rock formations, um, I'm going to do that kind of randomness on here. If you haven't seen that other one, you'll know what I'm talking about. And there's like some of this stuff I'll have to blend and soften the edges a little bit. Um, so just looking for those kind of little inclusions, little hot spots, light spots. And uh, this is going to take in kind of different forms. And like I have to emphasize, this is just the way I paint. Doesn't mean you, <laughs> you have to do it this way. Um, painting is like a signature. Um, however I do this will look different from what you do or anybody else. Now, because it's a signature, I can come back into this painting and you would never know where I started, stopped, added, even if it's years and years later, you still wouldn't be able to see. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of the signature of artist. Now, that's the same way. <laughs> and this, some people say, well, how, how can you do that and come back years later? Um, but it's the same technique. If you go with somebody with knowledge into a museum, and they don't even need to see the signature of the artist, in question. They could look at it from a distance and know what, what the artist is because their style sticks out. You know, I'm just using the impressionist because, you know, that's easier. I mean, if you see a, a, a dolly, you know, it's a dolly instantly because they're very unusual and creative and different things like that. Um, but, um, you know, Cezanne, Monet, uh, Degas, uh, I mean, all those, you, you can recognize their, their work just from the strokes, the color palette and everything. Now, I did a couple of demonstrations where I actually came in after 20 years on a watercolor I did to add more stuff to it. Still my signature. Now, if somebody else comes into my... <laughs> my work and tries to draw over it, it will stick out like you cannot believe. Now I'm just going to go in with a little bit of Payne's Gray. There's going to be kind of a little, kind of, and here's those little rock inclusions that will show up later. I'm going to switch to smaller brushes because this is not comfortable for me. I don't like working with gigantic brushes because that's just not me. But I just wanted to get a lot of stuff done. And I don't know, I, I, like I said, these things take a while and they're, they're building up of color and different techniques that um, work for me. Um, now I'm gonna come in there with some Little umbers, siennas, and just kind of lay in like this is will be like this up here. So now I'm looking for little cracks and crevices. I know this is going to be a crack in here, shadow. This is going to get darker on this side. I'm going to probably freeze this so I can let this dry some because it's wet on wet right now. And it's still making little kind of inclusions and little things um, that I'm noticing. They probably don't mean anything to you right now. So I'm going to freeze. Okay, it's, it's getting dry, but it's not totally dry right now. Um, 
Sometimes I let it dry almost completely. It has different effects. I did add some colors in here. Um, now, as it's wet on wet, it does some really nice little things that are accidents, but that's the beauty of watercolors. And you can see it's a little bit lighter in here, and it's blending. Now, I'm going to come back in here and try to follow some of these little inclusions. It's still wet on wet right now. And like I said, it's going to help with some of the blending. Sometimes, like I said, uh, I will let it just totally get dry. And I'll use a hair dryer for that. Speed up the process. And I'm gonna follow this cracks and crevices down. I may just kind of barely touch this because I really like what's happening there. I'm gonna put some gray in these little white areas. You can see it's drier here. You can see the different effects. Oh, you can't really see that. So let me kind of zoom out some. So I'm going to come in here and just kind of define the edges a little bit. And you can see those little happy little kind of rock inclusions which I'll blend out eventually. Still kind of wet up in here. This is going to be a kind of a shadow side. So I'm going to add more and this is what I taught my scribble technique. And, uh, well, that's what I call it. To get the rock formations to look natural. And this is taking a lot longer because I do spend times on this. Sorry. Um, I don't want to waste people's time trying to follow me around. Um, I'm going to just try to work on a few little areas here. This is more of a dry brush. And again, this helps with the, the rock textures. And I'll scrape and Bring out some areas, blend. Like I said, I'm just gonna work on this little area so you can see this is the way I would attack the other side because I'm gonna probably end this video because I don't wanna get people frustrated. I know you could probably just go fast forward on some of this and that's fine. Like I said, this is only for demonstration purposes. So I'm redefining these little edges here. This is kind of a reddish, not really reddish brown, but like a umber, ochre. And this is a little bit more in shadow. And I'm just gonna kinda do a little, like I said, little kind of inclusions to follow the detail. And the detail can be as much as you want. Some people that work in watercolors, they don't really like putting detail. Um, they want to give the impression, which is their style. I'm not saying <laughs> you have to paint like me. I'm just trying to show techniques that make sense to me. So this is kind of a light source up here. So I'll, again, I'm going to pull out the color in little certain areas. And if I see something that's too strong, like right in here, I'll blend it out. Maybe come back if I liked it, it looks better the way it was before. Um, 
And you can see there's some nice little rock formation things in here. Um, but my comfort zone is using a very tiny brush. Um, that's just who I am. So I'm going to come in here a little bit darker. Redefine these edges. And I'm going to just do a blow up. This is, like I said, I get nervous about trying to make these videos long. And I'm just kind of showing you the techniques of how to do this. And like I said, um, I, I don't want to waste people's time. Um, so I will show clips in steps of what, it, how it got to that point. Again, I'm just going to pull some out of here. Maybe a highlight in here. Maybe right, right in here, so that has a little shadow in there. Scribble technique. And if I keep coming into this, this is by putting layers on layers and layers, this crack or crevice will get deeper and deeper. So I'm putting it down there, I'm blending it out, following it up. Now I'm gonna probably stop there and see if I could blow up into that little area. And you can see the, and you can see how tiny this is. I mean, this is my finger, so. Um, but you can see it's getting like that little shadow and there's little teeny rock formations and little highlights and little shadows that happen just just naturally. See if I get close. Now, when I'm zooming in like this, um, <laughs> it's like you're looking at it under a magnifying glass. So you're not gonna really see all these little nice little, sh you can see how tiny they are. You, you're not gonna see these little cracks and crevices and little little highlights and little rock formations that are forming which I will go back there and redefine them and make them pop. Um, but for painting sakes and time, and you can see there's some nice little variations and you can see things happening, but I would just keep going back into this and working and working and working. So <clears throat> these are some of the brushes I use. Um, I use hundreds of different brushes because every brush does something different for me. Um, but there are like, you know, 10 favorite brushes that I use constantly.